Alterations in Mobility, Orthopedic and Connective Tissue Disorders. Arthritis is characterized by inflammation and degeneration of a joint. We often see this with rheumatoid disorders and osteoarthritis. Rheumatoid arthritis is an autoimmune system inflammatory disorder of the connective tissue and joints, but primarily in the synovial tissue. It may also affect other body systems such as the eyes, skin, heart, lungs, kidneys, and blood vessels. It is the most common form of autoimmune arthritis. Risk factors will include a genetic predisposition, smoking, and hormonal factors. These clients have an acute onset of symptoms. It's usually bilateral, symmetrical joint involvement. In other words, it's going to be on both sides of the body, both hands, both feet, etc. They may have subcutaneous nodules, muscle atrophy, flexion contractures, classic deformities, and swelling and warmth. We diagnose with x-rays, a serum protein electrophoresis, an arthrocentesis, a CRP or ANA test. We're going to realize that there's no cure for rheumatoid arthritis, but our goal is going to be to decrease joint inflammation, relieve discomfort, prevent disformities, restore function as we can, drug therapy, non-drug therapies, physical therapy, occupational therapy, and occasionally surgery will be required. We'll be doing an arthroplasty or a synovectomy. Nurses need to teach clients how to maintain their health, relieve pain, reduce stress, decrease inflammation, preserve joint mobility, and their medication regimen. Degenerative joint disease is also known as osteoarthritis, and it's the most common form of arthritis. We usually find this in the weight-bearing joints. These clients have had a lifetime of repeated trauma, especially to the hips, knees, spine, and hands. The cartilage becomes thin, rough, and ragged, and then the bone surfaces begin to rub together. They may develop some bone spurs, cysts, or osteophytes in the body's attempt to repair itself. Risk factors will include increasing age, a previous joint injury, obesity, congenital or developmental uh, factors, hereditary components, and decreased bone density. With primary DJD, there's no known cause. With secondary, the underlying cause is going to be some type of injury, for example. These clients are going to have stiffness, pain. They may have painless nodules or Heberden's nodes, Bouchard's nodes, a limited range of motion, and crepitus. We diagnose with radiology, and we can also do an ESR. These clients are going to benefit from rest, immobilization of the joint, exercise programs, TENS units, drug therapy, and joint replacement surgery. Nurses need to educate on, medica on medication, activity. We should also encourage weight loss and correct posture. The temporomandibular disorder is a cluster of system, uh, symptoms found near the jaw. It's caused by degenerative arthritis of the mandibular joint, a malocclusion of the teeth, grinding of the teeth, which all of these will cause displacement of the mandible. Symptoms include jaw pain, pronounced muscle spasm and tenderness of the masseter and temporalis muscles, they may also experience headache or tinnitus and ear pain that accompanies the localized discomfort. These clients may also experience a clicking of the jaw when they move that joint or the jaw itself can lock, which interferes with opening of the mouth. And they may also have a grating sensation when they move the jaw. Some clients will experience difficulty or discomfort with chewing. 
Management will include analgesics, a mouth guard, and maybe reconstructive surgery. Nurses should monitor intake and encourage soft foods if eating is an issue. Gout is an inherited painful metabolic disorder where we see an inflammatory reaction in the joints. It does affect men more often than women, and it usually affects the feet, great toe, hands, elbows, ankles, and knees. These clients will have some edema, a sudden acute onset of pain in one joint with redness, hypersensitivity, fever, TOFI, which are collections of uric crystals that can actually be palpated, hyperuricemia from increased production of or a decreased elimination of uric acid, and they can have repeated episodes. So these clients are going to have those clinical signs. We can do a uric acid blood test to help diagnose along with a urine test an arthrocentesis, or sometimes radiology will, will show us some good pictures. These clients will be treated with uricosuric drugs and a decreased ingestion of purine in their diet. Take NSAIDs, colchicine, phenylbutazone, or maybe require surgery. Nurses should um, Encourage the client not to use the uricosuric drugs with salicylates because the salicylates will actually um, nullify the uh, uricosuric drugs. We should encourage an adequate flu fluid intake and maybe encourage the use of a bed cradle, which basically goes over the foot of the bed and the Linens will rest on the foot cradle instead of on the client's joint because uh, the slightest touch can make this joint very hypersensitive. So true or false, gout affects more women than men. That's false, it's the other way around. Fibromyalgia is a chronic inflammatory illness causes unknown, but these patients do have increased levels of a neuropeptide involved with neurotransmission. They have a low blood flow to the thalamus and low levels of serotonin. It does more commonly affect middle-aged women. These clients will have a chronic syndrome of pain of at least three months with no known cause. Fatigue, connect uh, cognitive issues, sleep disturbances, and again, middle-aged women are most commonly affected. We diagnose with various things. Basically, it's going to be to rule out other conditions. Uh, although pain to the axial chest, neck, and back is the hallmark uh, symptom for diagnosis, but basically diagnosis is difficult. We treat with analgesics, antidepressants, some non-traditional therapies. Nurses should help encourage a healthy lifestyle and diet, encourage these clients to avoid caffeine and alcohol, and get adequate sleep and rest. Bursitis is inflammation of the bursa, which is a fluid-filled sac in the joint. The elbow, shoulder, and knee are going to be the most common sites. Usually it comes about because of trauma, infection, or repetitive motion or positioning. These clients will have painful movement of the joint, a distinct lump, edema, and maybe warmth. We diagnose with x-rays, and we can also do fluid aspirations to determine if there's any infectious process. We treat it with rest, salicylates, NSAIDs, corticosteroids, and mild range of motion exercises. Nurses need to educate on medications and discourage normal use of the joint, but discourage overuse of the joint. 
Ankylosing spondylitis is a chronic connective tissue disorder of the spine and cartilaginous joints that progress to progressive immobility and possible fusion of the vertebrae. The cause is unknown, but there may be a familial tendency. These clients will experience low back pain, a flattened lumbar curve, aortic regurgitation, and a permanently flexed neck, reduced lung sounds, fatigue, anorexia, and weight loss. We diagnose with an ESR, alkaline phosphatase and creatinine phosphokinase, CT scan, and x-rays. Treatment involves a supportive treatment, which would include medications, a back brace, sleeping on a firm mattress, physical therapy, prescribed exercises, and maybe requires a total hip replacement. Nurses need to encourage the client to perform as many of their own ADLs as possible. So true or false, there is no cure for ankylos ankylosing spondylitis. This is true. Systemic lupus erythematosus, or SLE, or lupus, is an autoimmune disease that involves connective tissue and chronic inflammation. It affects the skin, joints, kidneys, heart, lungs, brain, and lymph nodes. There is an unknown triggering mechanism, but we see destruction of diffuse connective tissues. It's also called the great imitator. Hormonal factors and strong family history may be involved along with stress, sunlight, viruses, and cigarette smoking as for the cause, and it does affect more women than men, usually between the ages of 15 to 45, and African Americans, Hispanic, Asian, and Native Americans are the ones it's most prevalent in. These clients will have remissions and exacerbations, clinical signs, facial rash, that uh, very distinctive butterfly rash, behavioral disturbances, fluid retention, proteinuria, hematuria, and many, many other symptoms. Diagnosis includes looking at the presenting symptoms, blood tests, maybe a renal biopsy or urinalysis. Medical management includes producing remission, preventing and or treating exacerbations, medications, renal, cardiac, GI, and CNS symptomatic treatment. Osteomyelitis is an infection of the bone. So it's usually caused by pathogens, and the most common one is Staphylococcus aureus, and there's many complications with osteomyelitis. These clients have inflammation of the tissue, bone necrosis because of vascular insufficiency, formation of new bone around the site, it can be caused by trauma or contamination during procedures. There's also an increased risk for osteomyelitis with long-term dialysis, chemotherapy, steroid or immunosuppressant therapy, and vascular insufficiency. Complications will include pathologic fractures, septicemia, thrombophlebitis, and muscle contractures. We diagnose by looking for an elevated leukocyte count and ESR, positive blood cultures, anemia, radiographs or x-rays, bone scans, MRI, and just definitive diagnoses. We're going to treat with immobilization, surgical debridement, maybe a closed saline irrigation, an antibiotic impregnated bead application. We may do a bone or muscle flap grafts. We have to may have to remove surgically implanted plates, screws, etc. 
definitely administer antibiotics, and this is usually going to be long term. And amputation would be a last resort. Nurses need to help prevent skin breakdown, make sure medications are be, being administered appropriately, and provide a lot of emotional support. Osteomyelitis is not something that we cure in just a few days. This takes weeks. Lyme disease is called, caused by the bor, uh, Borrelia bacterium. It's usually transferred to humans from ticks. They act as the vectors to transmit the bacteria. And it's more common in the Northeast and mid-Atlantic states. There's three basic stages. In stage one, we may see a red macule or papule at the bite site, the bullseye rash, fever, chills, and malaise, or flu-like symptoms. Stage two, there may be dysrhythmias and heart blocks, facial palsy, meningitis, and encephalitis. And stage three occurs at least four weeks after the bite. We see warm, swollen, and painful joints and joint erosion. We diagnose it through serological studies. We treat it with antibiotics and supportive measures. Prognosis is favorable with early treatment. However, there may be permanent multi-system problems with delayed treatment. Nurses need to provide disease and treatment education and prevention education. So true or false, Lyme disease is spread through mosquito bites. That's false. It's ticks, especially the deer tick. Osteoporosis is a loss of bone density. Women have it more than men. And this is where the bone becomes more brittle and porous. It is more common in small framed, slim Caucasian and Asian women, especially women who are menopausal. We see it more uh, in clients that have a family history, have increased age, a low calcium intake, prolonged steroid use, Cushing syndrome, etc which are all risk factors. When we I, examine these clients, they're going to have lumbosacral or thoracic back pain and the development of kyphosis. We diagnose through x-ray, a DEXA scan, or QUS. We treat with calcium, vitamin D, drug therapy, hormone replacement therapy, although that has a decreasing use, exercise, relieving pain, and preventing injury. Nurses need to reinforce the need for a nutritious, well-balanced diet, the increase of calcium intake, and encourage those weight-bearing exercises. Osteomalacia is a softening of the bone that's caused by a vitamin D deficiency. These clients have an insufficient calcium absorption, phosphate deficiency. They have bone pain, deformities, and a waddling gait. We diagnose with x-rays and serum levels. We treat it by treating the underlying cause providing adequate nutrition and supplements, exposure to sunlight, exercise, and they may require braces or surgery. Paget's disease is an abnormal bone remodeling. It's most common in the long bones, the spine, the pelvis, um, and the skull, and there's an unknown cause. Complications will include a pathologic fracture, paralysis, cranial nerve damage. These clients will have symptomatic uh, or asymptomatic presentations, 
They may have bone pain, tenderness, skeletal deformities. We diagnose with x-rays and bone scans. We treat with drug therapy and surgery. Nurses need to assist with ADLs and ensure client safety. Disorders of the feet can come about through hereditary, arthritis, or improperly fitting shoes. There's three main ones that we talk about, and this is going to be bunions, which is a deformity of the great toe at the metatarsophalangeal joint, or MTP joint. Hammer toes are a flexion deformity of the PIP joint, and a mallet toe is a flexion deformity of the DIP joint. Corns are an overgrowth of the epidermis that develops on top of the toe, and calluses are thickened layers of skin under the metatarsal area. These clients will experience pain, tenderness, and deformity. We diagnose with uh, just examination or x-rays. We encourage the clients to wear low-heeled, well-fitted shoes, exercises, pads, and surgery. Nurses are going to focus on pain relief and encouraging the client to wear proper, proper foot attire. Benign bone tumors are more common of the bone tumors and they have the potential of causing fractures. Basically, these are overgrown clusters of normal bone cells. They have a slow growth, no metastasis, and they occur in bone that is still growing. These clients may experience pain, deformity, and swelling. We diagnose with x-rays, bone scans, and potentially biopsies. And we treat with surgery, curatage, bone grafts, splints, or casts. Malignant bone tumors are abnormal osteoblasts or myeloblasts with rapid and uncontrolled growth. And remember, we call these sarcomas. They can be caused from radiation, toxic chemical exposure, and they can be hereditary. Primary tumors are usually located in the distal femur or proximal fibula or proximal humerus. These clients may experience pathological fractures, difficulty in movement, and abnormal gait. We diagnose with x-rays, MRI, bone scan, and biopsy. Treatment may include surgery up to and including amputation, radiation, and chemotherapy. Nurses provide emotional support and client education on disease and treatments. Postoperatively, we would definitely be doing neurovascular checks and elevation.